if it's not legal to marry or if, if it's not legal to be a queer in this patriarchal, homophobic um, capitalism, being queer is already a crime. Now we have a bigger enemy, which is Russia. I'm a queer activist, Ukrainian queer activist, and uh, they would probably kill me immediately. I think that our pre-war life was, I don't know, just amazing. The community was getting like more united and stronger. We knew what we need to fight for. And actually, tonight I didn't sleep well because of the air raid sirens. This is the thing that is the hardest for me to understand, that there's people who are launching those uh, missiles to kill me. We wrote this, um, I think, one week before the full-scale invasion and we just wanted to spread awareness uh, among tourists that were coming to this club to party and that didn't care about the fact that there was ongoing war in the east of Ukraine. To be honest I feel a, a little bit sad when I look at that because uh, when we were writing this I still had my life. Now I don't have the privilege of that kind of life. I don't meet my friends. My friends are in army. I don't go to bars because we have curfew. All the simple things that were there in my life when I was writing this, no longer here. Yeah, the first days uh, of the full-scale invasion, I was here. And here's my window. One, two, three, four, that one. One year ago, at 6.31, I woke up because of a phone call. And a person said, please don't panic, but they started bombing cave. It was just scary, a lot of fear I felt back then. My friend used to live here who is now in army just like it was life we were living our lives and now I'm like a ghost walking on the ruins of my life that used to be my life just maybe looking for traces Hello there, it's February 24th of 2023. For most of Ukrainians, war is going on only for uh, one year, but for me it's nine years from 2014. I wasn't expecting to make it, honestly. I had no doubt that Ukraine will stand and win, but me personally... I'm a trans girl, but I still have female socialization. There are like 55,000 women in Ukrainian army, but they serve in the rear. I mean, they don't serve on the front line like me. There is sexual violence even in my company. I feel alone and uh, isolated. Now I'm tired as shit, but the perspective changed as well. I'm feeling more like a cell of a giant body that runs a marathon. I'm on my treatment. I have my leg shattered. Right now I'm extremely depressed. I'm used to rescuing someone. I'm used to shooting my rifle. No shit is happening here. 
I, I swear, sometimes I feel like breaking someone's face. Mm, because, well, violence is the biggest part of army. My sugar levels are low, but I will be walking as long as it's needed. I will be serving as long as it's needed. The war is the only job I really like. It's cool. You should try it for yourself. The adrenaline. This is awesome. The feeling like you're alive. <laughs> And I wish that Russia will be gone till the next one. It would be nice. Bye. I was just lying in my bed, uh, not knowing what the fuck I can do to help. And just having this urge, I, I should do at least something. I just thought, okay, I have a camera. I know a lot of queer people who are fighting and I need to tell their stories. Короче, я вирішив, що якщо я ну, не піду ні, ні, нікуди, то я буду себе знавжати. Просто та особистість, яку я собі підбудовував, вона, ну, вона дуже сильно розіб'ється. Ми are 40 км away from the front line. And here we're gonna interview Mark. Диджей поклад. Диджей. Короче, в Харкові я займалася тим, що робили вечірки. Подеколи з друзями грали ось Україною. Ну, в мене, типу, я зараз дещо відрізняюся від, від е, себе трік з рік, рік з лишком тому. Моя робота це те, щоб якби і наші позиції, ну, і наші типи залишилися цілі і е, максимально слюр для слова росіяни, щоб вони та їх техніка були знищені. Ну, мені не до вподоби це. Я не знаю, ну, люди помирають, це піздець, що, ну, прям знайомі мої, я вахую. Ні, ну, та, та, робіть, як знаєте. Ні, якщо війна ще триває на рік, то точно треба йти. Та ну на. Ні, ну, ні. Ні, ну, ні. Та, та, робіть, як знаєте. In the early days of the war, I was ready to fight. All my friends were ready to fight. No matter what, if they're gonna come to Kiev, we're gonna throw a lot of cocktails in them, we're gonna fight back. I would rather die here fighting than let them occupy Kiev. My name is Andriy, I'm a military psychologist. As you can see, I don't look screaming queer. Sometimes I expose some homoerotic things, uh, maybe jokes, maybe compliments. They may start to freak out a bit, but then a little of education and so on. So I'm not having really hard times in that. I know that other queer people in the units, they may have bigger problems with that. <laughs> What is true about Ukrainian military is that they are very different people, extremely different people, are fighting to kill one enemy and to gain one victory. 23rd February you will not share a beer with a guy. You don't like him, he has different values, different views. But 24th of February and you are both in trenches defending each other and maybe after the victory you'll go to, a, to different bars. Maybe not, but uh, this is what it is. We are fighting for values, for the culture, for the identity, for us to be able to be ourselves. The fight that makes the most sense is going to army, I think, and sometimes I think of going to army. But there's many ways to fight. Hello. The 
there's no people here. There's no people on the streets and it smells like explosions. Daria is a queer woman uh, who is serving in the Ukrainian army and in the summer I interviewed her in Kharkiv and this time I'm gonna meet her in Donbass where she grew up. І також займалася активізмом. Це був феміністський активізм та ЛГБТ плюс активізм. Досі багато коментарів про те, що ну, якийсь там срач черговий у Твіттері про щось про якийсь ЛГБТ дискурс, і туди по-любому хтось прийде і напише, чому вони не в окопах. І ця людина теж пише з окопів, ми це знаємо прекрасно. ЛГБТ-спільнота теж сидить в окопах, ЛГБТ-спільнота теж воює. I was telling her that I have this guilt that I'm not in the army and I'm, that I'm considering to join the army. And I said that um, I have a privilege to be in Kyiv only because people in army are fighting. And she said that people in army are fighting because people in Kyiv support them. Okay, so maybe there are things that I can do, but still, um, I don't know yet. I still need to decide where I am the most useful. During Maidan, we had this slogan, I'm a drop in the ocean. Like you might think, I'm just a drop, it doesn't change anything, but the ocean is made from drops. Making the film does feel like I'm part of the fight and it definitely helps me to get through days. I am feel kind of like joy, I guess, that I could be here and interview them and record that. But at the same time, seeing people in this context and realizing how many people we are losing. And when you're here, all this is just too real. I want to puke all my emotions out of me with blood. <laughs> I just got the email that I was accepted to art residency in Poland, but I don't want to go. I just want to stay in Kyiv. My life was here and I was falling in love here, having friends, having home. It's not even safe to you know, be here, but it's still the only place where I feel alive. So this arc, when it was built, it was supposed to be a, like a symbol of Ukrainian and Russian friendship. But obviously now there is only enemy ship I don't know the word anyway but I when I look at this and when I was looking at this always it's just the uh, statue of queerness it's a rainbow and you know I think we need just to change the name the monument of queerness amazing <laughs> <laughs>